Welcome to our first podcast, Socks in 60. Today we'll be discussing Kevin Durant, NBA free agency, NFL free agency, and much more. I am the X in Socks. That is the S, and let's begin with yep. Kevin Durant. So Kevin Durant, as we all know, over the weekend decided to go to Golden State and make a super team, as we like to call it. What do you mm-hmm. think about this move from Kevin Durant? Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it. I feel like it's kind of cowardly, and um, it takes away like the competitiveness, I feel like, of the NBA a little bit. Because rather than being like, oh, I'm going to try really hard and beat this team, he decides to join it. So, I don't know. And plus, they were fine without him, so imagine how good they're going to be this year. And it wasn't like the team he was leaving was like terrible, like the Cavs before LeBron left. I mean, they, they finished third in the West, in a very, very strong West. I think it was a very bad move by Kevin because I think it takes the prestige out of the entire yes, winningness definitely. of the championship. Because if he would have won with Oklahoma City, he he was born in Washington, D.C., but he grew up in Oklahoma City. So that's like his home. He would have won for his home, basically. He would have won for a city that he's played for almost 10 years, a decade. Almost a decade he's played for the Thunder. And... Just leaving them, go going to Golden State, just for one championship. It's a two-year deal. I don't think he's gonna stay two years, and I think that the Thunder, with the addition of adding Victor Oladipo, I think that would have put them over the edge on the bench, and I think they would have beat Golden State. And I think it was just a bad move all around. So, how do you think this impacts his legacy, as far as? Well, I I think it does impact his legacy if he does win because. Rather than win by leading his team and being the star and being the reason they won, he's just going to be bandwagoning, as most Golden State fans are. He's going to be bandwagoning on this great Golden State team. Even if they do win, there could be chemistry issues, there could be injuries. I mean, everyone's saying it's the end of the NBA, but that stuff happens. Yeah, it's definitely not a sure win. I mean, I think we're going to get into this later, but I think the Paul Gasol addition for the San Antonio Spurs was a big move by them. They needed a center because Duncan was missing a lot of open lineups in that Oklahoma City series in the playoffs. So I think that's going to put them over the edge, maybe be a contender again. Um, as far as legacy goes, I think that it's going to impact his legacy because if he does win, then he's just going to be looked at as a coward and no one's going to remember as being his team. It's just going to be Steph's team and Clay's team and Draymond's team. So I don't... I think it's the same as if he didn't win a championship at all. Like There are many great players that have won one or none championships, like Jerry West, Charles Barkley, Patrick Ewing. And no one really says, well, they didn't win a championship. Well, they carried their team to the finals and such, so you can't really fault those guys, and everyone looks at them as top-tier NBA players. I don't think anyone's going to look at Kevin Durant as a top-10 player by his, when his time's done. Yeah, He's a great scorer. He's probably the best scorer of all time, pure scorer. But other than that... I just don't see what's going, what's going to happen in Golden State. I don't think it's good for him. Mm-hmm. So, and, how do you. Th- uh, okay, I can go on, keep going. No, you can. No, I was going to say this is going to impact the league because rather than hoping for a good team, like a good uh, competitive game or whatever, we're now going to be rooting for teams to get injured. We're now rooting for chemistry problems. This is not going to be a very good NBA season. I yeah, I, I think viewing may go down. Like, the NBA is very productive league it has makes a lot of money the salary cap is through the roof but i don't think it's going to be good this year at all it's going to be a bad product and it has a problem like it has in the last three years there are some very top tier teams but there are there's a middle like a middle class of most where most of the teams hang out and then there's teams tanking trying to get to that top tier the philadelphia 76ers yeah just, just okay, you want to talk about some other free agency moves now, or are, you, or are we still on Kevin Durant? The, well, I think we basically covered... Did we cover we, all our I, thoughts? I, I think we I covered think our Kevin Durant thoughts. So let's go to NBA free agency. What do you think was your sleeper deal of NBA free agency? Oh, dude, Mike Conley. No, I'm kidding. I'm obviously kidding there. Uh, hmm. I'm looking at some of the free agency here. I'm looking at some of the things, some of the notes I took, you know, cheat sheet. Uh, hmm. I, I feel like a lot of people aren't talking about this, but I feel like Al Hortford uh, from the Hawks to the Celtics in a four-year, $113 million contract was a good pickup for the Celtics. I mean, he's 
I mean, he's, he's a great scheme fit. Um, he's a great scorer and uh, provides good spacing on the floor for the Celtics. And um, like with all the pick and rolls and screens the Celtics run, he's going to fit in fine. And he's going to make that team a lot better. I mean, they were already good to begin with. I mean, a lot of people didn't expect them to do anything last year. And they got into the playoffs. I mean, they didn't really yeah, they didn't we, win, but still. I I agree that that was a good pickup. Um, I'm going slightly off route. I already mentioned it earlier. I'm going Pau Gasol. Yes, he's 36, but they got him for about 15 million, million a year. I mean, that's not much in today's NBA. With Mike Conley getting more money than Tom Brady, Russell Wilson, and Cam Newton combined. I mean, so Paul Gasol, he's old, but we saw last year in Chicago that he's a great player. And I have a um, potential really good pickup. It was by the Nets. Trevor Booker. No one's really talking about this one, but Booker was a great power forward in Utah. And the Nets, the Nets have done a great job in free agency. They had a Jeremy Lin. They had Alan Crabb, Trevor Booker. I think they're going to be a great team going forward. Yeah, they're not going to um, be laughing stock any, anymore for that much longer if that continues. That's very and, true. That can make the Boston picks look a lot worse than what yeah. people are making them. Um, what do you think was the bad, bad deals or worst deal? Uh, the worst deal is Dwayne Wade. He's a great player. Dwayne Wade in Chicago. He's a great player, but that's just not a good fit for that team. I mean, when we're, we're John Rondo's your, your point guard, and they're going to have terrible spacing issues. Neither of them can really make or make or attempt threes. I'm looking for the stat right now. Yes, in the last three seasons, Wade and Rondo combined for 116 three-pointers, while Steph and Clay combined for 300, 363. rather. And um, I know Steph and Clay is an extreme example of point guard, shooting guard, shooting threes. But I feel like that team's going to be really easy to defend with the way they, with the way they space the floor, like wanting to drive and get layups for their guards rather than shooting. I, I, I agree. I think that was a bad pickup. Um, I'm going down south. I'm going Hawk sign Dwight Howard because I think Dwight's best years were behind him. I was a big fan of Dwight in Orlando. He was a great player. He carried them to the 2009 NBA Finals. Granted, they kind of got lucky because KG got hurt that year and the Celtics were depleted. But I think his years are well behind him and he got way too much money. I mean, he's getting more money now as a worse player than he did as a great player in Orlando. I think the worst movie ever did was go to L.A. and that derailed his career, and I don't think he'll ever recover. Yeah. Um, and another bad move, I think, was one you said, Rondo to the Bulls. You said Wade, but I'm going Rondo because I think Rondo Rondo is a great player. Don't get me wrong. But he can't shoot. He's not a great shooter. He can only shoot within, like, 10 feet of the basket. You can't shoot threes, as you already mentioned. He is a great passer, but John Stockton could shoot, the best passer in the league. So you have to be able to shoot if you want to pass, too, because then they'll just know you're a pass-first point guard and let you in the paint. And I think with Jimmy Butler and D. Wade, yes, they're high egos and they're great team players, but Fred Hoiberg had a problem with Jimmy Butler, who's a great player and had great great just overall charisma to him so how is he gonna fare with the complete opposite of that if you can't handle the best how are you to handle the worst so i think that's yeah. bad for the coach who do you think the winners and losers are of free agency just give me a few teams that you think this is this is i think i think the losers uh one of them is the memphis grizzlies with uh with the mike conley signing because mainly they signed to the biggest contract in nba history as you mentioned and He's 28 years old, and that's not too old, but he still hasn't proven himself yet and has never made an all-star game. And if he doesn't play well this season, um, this is a do-or-die season. Especially, I know he already has the contract, but he has to prove to everybody this season that he's worth the money. And if he isn't, then it starts to go on a decline. The Grizzlies are kind of screwed because if they want to trade for him, no one's going to want to trade for someone with that big of a contract. And that's going to take away the Grizzlies' cap and, if they want to trade him, any other team's cap as well. Did so you I like think they're a big loser. Uh, going on the Grizzlies there, did you like the Chandler Parsons pickup? Because the Grizzlies did sign Chandler Parsons. Did you like that move in free agency? Mm. I, don't, I don't really know how that's going to turn out too well, honestly. Like, okay, just – all right. Makes sense. What do you What do you think? I think my, my winners of free agency, I already said this, the Nets. I mean, they improved yeah. mightily. They got mm -hmm. – 
Another player I forgot to mention, Tyler Johnson. I, I'm big on Tyler Johnson. He was the Miami point guard. He didn't play much. He, he was kind of lost in the shuffle on the guards, but I think he's a great player. Jeremy Lin, he had a great season last year with the Hornets. That could be big for him. Thaddeus Young, probably the most underrated deal of this free agency. And just recently, they're probably getting Alan Crabb. I just got a report in. They're most likely getting Alan Crabb of the Portland Trailblazers. So I think that's a great move as well. Really building up the entire team. Another winner. I'm going to go kind of off the grid here. I'm, I'm going... Um, well, we're not going to say Golden State. That's that's obviously too easy. Yeah. But I'm going to go um, the Dallas Mavericks. I think they kept a lot of good people. They signed Dwight Powell. That was just great for them. They didn't really lose anything. They still got better. And one more team that I think might have won in free agency here is the Phoenix Suns. They got better too they got jared dudley i think that's a good pickup for them and leonardo barbosa who could teach the young guards how to play phoenix has a lot of young talent devin back, Booker. Back to phoenix. back to phoenix that's right yeah. and i know i said i was done but i would just like to say one more and that is the new york knicks i know mm-hmm. this is kind of controversial but i'm i'm telling you and I saw a video this morning of Joakim Noah working out. He looked really good. He looked fast again. I know it was just a workout, but he looked very strong. Derek Rose had a nice bounce back season. If he could stay healthy, he doesn't have to be his MVP self, just an above average point guard. That's all they need. Courtney Lee, I really like that pickup. It's really underrated. Courtney Lee is not an all star per se. He could be, but not in this point of his career, I don't think. But yeah, with Carmelo and Porzingis, I think that's a great team. At the moment. So who are your losers of this free agency? Well, as I said, the Grizzlies before and the Hawks obviously getting Dwight Howard. For a a player that old and with his production coming off, I think that contract is just too big. I mean, they definitely didn't improve losing Al Horford and getting Dwight Howard. A lot of people think that somewhat is an improvement. I I honestly don't think so. And, uh, yeah. You make it. My bad. No, no, just keep going. I'm fine. All right. I was going to say, um. One of my losers is the Orlando Magic. Um, kind of confused what they're doing over there in Orlando. They have Vucevic, and then they sign Bismack Biombo to this major contract. I was quite confused. They're not in a division with the um, Raptors. It's not like they're hurting the Raptors. Bismack Biombo was great, but he had one good season, and we know how one good season can affect you. We'll talk about later about that in the NFL. And Definitely. The, Evan Fournier, a great guard. They overpaid him. And they have Jody Meeks, like Jody Meeks, really. I just think a great young core. They may win with depth like the Celtics last year. I just, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to turn the corner just yet. They did get Jeff Green. I did like that pickup. But other than that, nothing really. And another one I don't like is the Pistons. I think the Pistons, this free agency, took every obscure player that was pretty good on an awful team and signed them. Uh, that's just really what happened. I mean, they got Ish Smith, John Lohr, um, the man from the Spurs whose name I can't pronounce. I'm sorry, everyone. I just can't pronounce his name. They got him as well. And I just don't understand what they're doing. I mean, they had a great team. They may that may put them over the edge. I mean, these were good players, but they were on bad teams or they were good players in like a sixth man kind of role. So I don't know how it's gonna affect them. And all of them are late twenties. Besides Ishman who's kinda young. Mm-hmm. What I'm doing right now is actually uh, looking for see if Ray Allen uh, any more rumors about Ray Allen. And uh, some some reports are coming out. Uh, that he might not actually return to the NBA, and that's being shot down. But I'm not. There's all these different websites reporting on it right now, and uh, there's nothing for sure, really. But what are, what are your thoughts on Ray Allen? My thoughts on Ray Allen, I don't think he's going to return. These rumors have been around since as soon as he retired. They thought he was going to Gold, Golden State last year. Just um, in my personal opinion, Instagram is bigger and social media is bigger than it was in. Like the last two years, it's getting bigger and bigger. 
So these reports were as strong. But now, since it's so strong and the Warriors get KD, it's of course it's going to be stuff. blown out of the force. Media. Yeah. Well, I think overall, NBA free agency is kind of ridiculous what some of these guys are getting. Like, Timofey Mozgov, I thought that was probably one of the worst deals of free agency oh. as pure money-wise goes. Maybe not fit, but money. Way overpaid. And I think some guys like Seth Curry, who has so much potential, gets a two-year, four million contract. But Timofey Mozgov, who maybe he's kind of proven, but he's not that good, gets that ridiculous contract from the Lakers. I mean, just kind of crazy if you ask me. Yeah, um, so I've got some of these reports, and some of these are just ridiculous. So, As, as you said, Mike Conley. Mm. So, moving on, do you want to talk about the NFL free agency, or you still got more to say about NBA free, free agency? I, I'll love to go to NFL free agency. Yeah, I think the biggest loser of NFL free agency, I know this is going to sound controversial, but uh, the Houston Texans, I mean... Rock Osweiler playing seven games, okay. And they're paying him $72 million based on seven games he played. I know it's impossible to say for sure whether he's going to be good, bad, um, based on seven games. But his his, his um, stats in seven games were just above average. I mean, 61.8% completion percentage, 100, one, not 100, 1,967 yards, which is 281 per game, 10 tees and six interceptions. I mean, those aren't bad. When you play an entire season, like you're gonna have, you're bound to have some bad games, and some games that will ruin your stats. I mean, he only played in seven games, so his stats maybe weren't tainted. Um, so I, don't, I think it's kind of dumb on the Texans. I mean, they've had quarterback problems, uh, past six years. Um, and 32 million for a player that's only played seven games. That's a little ridiculous to me, and that's expecting too much from him. I'm gonna disagree with you on that front. I think the Texans were a big winner this year. Um, they got Lamar Miller. Lamar Miller was a great back. They really didn't use him in Miami, right? But when they did use him, you saw what happened. He had like a 200-yard game from scrimmage plus this year, if I remember correctly. Plus, 200-plus yard game from scrimmage. He had like four touchdowns. That might have been – that was like week six, I believe. And that was a great game for him. So I think we both agree that's a good pickup for them. They Arian Foster's old. They need to move on. That was a great job from them. Injury yeah, play. I think that's a good, I think that's a good signing. But my problem was with the Brock Osweiler. I think that's I think Brock Osweiler kind of like um, nullifies that signing because just how much they decided to pay Brock Osweiler and how much uncertainty is there. And as far as Brock I'm Osweiler goes, signing, he beat Cincy. I think that was a big win for him. That was a statement game. It was Monday Night Football. That was a huge win in Denver. You basically won the game for them down the stretch. Um, he beat New England. Just the teams he beat, I think he proved that, yes, Peyton Manning did thrive in the Denver system. So it could, you know, be overproportioned here. Out, like, overblown that, oh, he beat New England. But then again, New England, had, injured, uh, yeah, New England had half their team injured that game. And it was in the snow. And Denver has the best defense, one of the best defenses of all time. So, I mean... That could be overproportioned. But another another bad saw, signing was Mohamed Sanu to the Falcons. I mean, like Falcons already have Julio Jones, but they definitely need another n- another number two. Roddy White's just not getting it done. Too old. And, they take, and um, to actually be able to throw to Julio Jones, you also you also have to have another good receiver. So um, there'll be more one on one situations, less coverage, stuff like that. But I don't think Mohamed Sanu is the right guy for this. We saw him try to be a number two in uh, Cincinnati. But he just wasn't getting it done. I mean, he had 22 drops and seven TDs in three years. For someone who was a number two receiver, then a number three, 22 drops is a lot. And seven TDs in three years, I mean, he was a number two. He was a number two for some of that stretch, and this is not good. And um, I feel like he doesn't play well in big games. Uh, He might change. He still has time. He's not that old yet. But I, I just don't think this is a great signing for the Falcons. For me, I'm just going to say something we've talked about many times before oh, that I'm yes. just yes. so baffled by is Ben Watson to oh, my Baltimore. God. It makes absolutely no sense. Ben Watson, I'm not going to call any 30-year-old old, but he's an older man for football. And they have Dennis Pitta, Rocky Gilmore, and Max Williams. Three, they could all be top-tier tight ends in this league. 
and they signed three Ben. Starters. I wouldn't say top tier, but three starters. Yes, I think Clark Gilmore is extremely criminally underrated. And um, Max Williams, I think, could be a great player in this league as well. And Dennis Pitta, yes, but I think those two young tight ends, oh, man, I think they could really thrive. And maybe Ben Watson could teach them the ropes. I just thought it was bad. And another questionable move by Baltimore was Mike Wallace. I mean, they have Steve Smith. Yeah, seriously? They have Steve Smith. They have Kamar Aiken. They have a young Bershaw Perriman. He didn't really play. I don't think he played at all last year. Excuse me. And he's not really a veteran presence. You have Steve Smith on the team. You don't really need another veteran. Mike Wallace had some of his worst seasons lately, and they give him a nice contract. The Ravens had a really up and down free agency because they also got Eric Weddle for a bag of donuts. Well, they, so they got a lot of old players. They didn't, they didn't improve in terms of younger players. They got a lot of older yeah, veterans. They got which, a lot of older vet. I think which Eric might, Weddle. Which might, work, which might work quickly, but then over time, that's not going to really work out too well. Retire, getting older, ability yeah, going down. So I think Eric Weddle was definitely a great pickup by them. I mean, you can't really say otherwise there. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. And as far as good pickups go, I want to say Brent Grimes. To mm-hmm. That was really – yeah, that, that was a good pickup. Because, yes, he had a down 2015. Yes, he's getting a little older. But reports came out that his wife had problems with the team, which could majorly affect your play. I mean, if you're what happy wife, happy life. So opposite of that, not so good. And then Alfred Morris to the um, Dallas Broncos. Dallas, Dallas Cowboys, Broncos. excuse me. Dallas Cowboys. Don't mind me. This is my first podcast. Dallas yep. Cowboys. Um, you saw – what Darren McFadden did behind that line. Alfred Morris, I would say, is better than Darren McFadden. Hate on me all you want. I'm going to say that. A pickup I didn't really like. Um, I know we're talking about good pickups now, but speaking of running backs, uh, older, not Alfred Morris isn't old at all, but um, Matt Forte to the Jets. I mean, uh, I don't don't like that at all because you you decide not to re-sign Chris Ivory, who, who is a younger player. He played great last season. Uh, he he's only gonna get better at this point. And rather than resigning him, did they let him walk and then get an older running back, Matt Forte? I mean, you still have Bilal Powell, however the hell you say his name. But I I feel like he's not gonna be as good as Chris Ivory. Matt Forte's older. He's not gonna play as well as he did in Chicago. And I don't, I just don't feel like this is a good long term move by the by the I almost said the Bears by the Jets. Yeah, I don't think so either. I mean, they signed Curry Robinson. They have Bilal Powell. That's a really crowded backfield. I just don't understand it. And you mentioned Chris Ivory. I think that's one of my winners of free agency is yeah. the Jacksonville Jaguars. You get Chris Ivory. You oh, get Malik Jackson. Jackson, who was a great pickup, in my opinion. You get Sean Gibson, who really no one's talking about, but I thought that was a great, great he kinda pick. Had, he kind of had a down year, that's why. But then again, who was in Cleveland? Yes, yeah, so it was a Cleveland defense that was way overpaid. They had a bad, like really bad season. What would you want to play for anyway? So, I mean... I'm just going to give him the benefit of the doubt. You know how much they should be playing for the Cleveland Browns, I'd imagine. Yeah, exactly. And then, I mean, everyone has a bad season. So when you have – I a lot of times I say you only have – like some guys only have one good season. But, I mean, this guy has been a consistent free safety, all pro free safety for most of his career. I mean, I'll let him have a pass this time. I just think with um, Julius Thomas last year, Great, one of the best wide receiver cores in the NFL. Allen Robinson, the Allen brothers, Allen Robinson, Allen Hearns. You got Marquise Lee on the rise, and you got Julius Thomas at tight end. Then you got Blake Bortles, who's and plus he's not going to be injured, hopefully, yes. like he was last season. Blake Bortles going to be a good quarterback. He's thriving in the NFL. And then you got Chris Ivory, you, you just picked up, who maybe could teach TJ Yeldon to be a little better. TJ Yeldon had. A rocky rookie season, to say the least. But I think that if they hey, want to, you got a young core of running backs. Yeah, that's right. Young core. You also have uh, Chris Toby, Toby Gerhart as well. So that that could be a really good running back committee. Another pickup I liked was uh, by the Patriots. They they made they made two good pickups, but I'm gonna talk about one right now. Uh, Terrence Knighton. I know he's a little bit of an older player, and I've been saying, oh, get younger players, you know. But I think this can be an exception because most of the Patriots' defense is younger, and they def- they desperately needed a good D tackle after Vince Wilfork left. Malcolm Brown didn't have a terrible season, but he didn't have a great season. And uh, I feel like they get a veteran presence that already knows what 
how to win, um, how, how to play well. He's been in the league for a long time. He's been an elite defensive tackle. He's going to remind us a lot of Vince Wolf work same, about the save size and stuff. Uh, so I, I feel like this is a great move by the Patriots to get Terrence Knight in. I can't disagree with you there. I'm going to go with a former Patriot here for a highest potential. Brandon LaFell, or Brandon Drops, as we call him here in New England. Um, he had an awful, 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 awful 2015 campaign. It was bad. It was hard to watch. But Super Bowl 49 season, when the Pats won the championship, he was a major component of that team. He got hurt. And he wasn't the same signs. But if he can he return... Lost, I think it was mainly he lost his confidence when he got hurt. That's yeah, I, think he, I agree. I think he lost maybe his mojo. I'm going to say mojo or swagger when he got hurt. And then now that he's back, he's in a new environment. He still has a good quarterback. And he's going to be probably the number two if they want to... He's not really a slot receiver. So, I mean, they're probably going to put him at two with A.J. Green being the one. And maybe, like, what happened with Mohamed Sanu, they're going to throw to him a lot, but hopefully he doesn't drop it like Sanu did. So, that... And they have no more Marvin Jones. One of my favorite picks up, pickups by the Lions was Marvin Jones. I thought that was great. Another uh, pickup I liked, it was another Patriots one. I was, I, I was saving it for you, but I guess you didn't want to do it. Martellus Bennett. Again, oh, another, yes, older player yes, pick, yes. Another, another older player picked up by the Patriots. And they already had a great tight end. They could have another Gronk Hernandez thing, which Hernandez, um, you know, that didn't really work out yeah, too we, well. I don't want to talk about that. But when, when he was actually playing, uh, him and Gronk were, like, matched up nightmares for the defense. I mean, they were, they were bigger than some linebackers. And then the linebackers that they weren't bigger than, they were faster than. And, like, you can't put a corner on them. The corner's too small. And when you have, and when you have two great tight ends out there, Martellus Bennett and Gronk, uh, and Gronk's, I hate to say it, is kind of injury prone. Uh, he gets hurt a lot. And when he's not hurt, he's a great player, but obviously when he's, he gets hurt a lot. So then we have a good veteran backup in Martellus Bennett, who can start anywhere else as we've seen. I mean, he didn't have a great year last year. I believe he was injured. But um, for the Bears, he wouldn't, for the Bears, he played tremendously. He almost had 1,000 receiving yards. And offense that mainly, that mainly, um, like through to uh, Alshon Jeffrey and Brandon Marshall. So a tight end having almost a thousand yards along with those two receivers, that's a pretty good accomplishment right there. With Jay Culler, a quarterback as well. Um, I think, yeah, it's hard to cover Gronk as it is. No safety in the league can cover Gronk. And you can't find many that can cover Bennett. So have both of them on the field at the same time. What you going to do? I mean, it's really hard. That may terrorize the league. Um, I think another good one, just to close this out here, was Olivier Vernon to the Giants. I thought that was a pretty good pickup by them. They didn't get him for too much. I mean, they didn't give him the Dom Kitsu money. For a top-tier Pro Bowl, and they did not pay him as much as I would think they would have to. And the Dolphins franchise had him scoop him right up right afterwards because he didn't sign. So I thought that would really improve the Giants' defense. I think they're a playoff team this year. Um, they did yeah. lose Ruben Randall, one of the most low-key free agent moves in this free agency was Ruben Randall to the Eagles. Well, other than that, um, uh, what do you, do you are you going to talk about the top one hundred now? Is that what we're going? Oh yes, to? I'd love to pick up apart this top one hundred list. So, uh, and man. if you're living under a rock, the players every year for the last five years or so, they vote on their peers of the top 100 players right now in the NFL. So at this current some of the players don't even know what to root for. Like, yeah. So some of the players think, some of the players think it's for next year. Some of the players think it's for last year. I mean, like the first problem is it not being clear about what they're even voting for. Top, top 100 players of 2016. 2016 hasn't happened yet. That's next year. The players uh, vote who do you think is going to be the best next year. That's what, that's what the whole point is. That some players who was the best last year? That just confuses the entire thing. Yeah, it just it's, makes it. It's unclear. really bad. It's quite bad. Um, yeah. So this just wrapped up uh, Wednesday night, and the number one ranked player in the league was Super Cam Cam Newton. Mm. What do you think of this being a New England Patriots fan? I really don't want to be biased here, and I know since I'm from New England, I'll definitely show some biasy. Is that? 
it's not even a word. I have no idea. But um, I feel like he, he, he played great. He definitely deserved the MVP in the regular season, definitely. But I feel like the, a truly great player plays best in the playoffs and under pressure. And he did have some great under pressure regular season games. But the playoffs, especially the Super Bowl, I know it was a great against a great defense, and I'm not gonna take that away from him. I mean, he made it. He was good enough to carry that team to the Super Bowl. Well, I wouldn't say carry, but you know what I mean. Carry that offense. Yeah, I get you. But um, I don't think he should be that high. I I think he should be too. Cause just the way he played in the playoffs and the way he wasn't clutch in the Super Bowl. I mean, definitely if he comes in more like with a clearer mind, um, just forgetting about the Super Bowl short-term memory loss, as Charles Barkley says it, and I feel like I feel like he can be great next year, but this year I don't think he deserves to be number one simply because of how he played in the playoffs and especially the Super Bowl. I think that that should probably go to Tom Brady just because he led the league in touchdown passes, had so many injured players yet was still able to have a good season, um, and he played he, I I know he got I know he got hit a lot and then I think he I think he turned the ball over a few times in the Denver game, but I feel like he played great at the end of that and um, they they just didn't happen to win, but I feel like he deserves to be number one. I am a Titan fan, so yeah, sure. This is not as biased for me. Uh, go Mary Goda. Um, but I totally agree. I think Cam has quite inflated stats. He had no Kelvin Benjamin, so he had to do many things by himself. I mean, he was punching the ball in from the one yard line by himself. I mean, obviously that's gonna inflate your stats just a little bit. I mean, a lot of teams just give it to the running back, so. If you're counting that as, oh, he's better because he has more touchdowns, well, how does he get that those touchdowns? Mm-hmm. I think that's a big thing. He had more toner, more turnovers than Brady. He had a higher touchdown-turnover ratio, a worse touchdown-turnover ratio, rather. Um, he had less passing yards. He had less yards combined, actually, as well, if I do remember correctly. Um, I just don't understand what the players were thinking. Yes, he's younger. But this is not who's a better player if you're going to draft the team tomorrow. This is right now. Who's mm-hmm. better? So if you want him for a year, Brady, definitely. Um, so, yeah, I think Brady got robbed. I was still going to another New England Patriot. And two people got robbed that should have been much higher in this top 10. They were in the top 10, but they should have been higher. J.J. Watt, I feel like, should have been the number two. I think he should have switched. I think Brady should be one. And JJ should be too, because I think JJ Watt, it, Brady's one of the greatest of all time. The NFL Network post says that, and I don't get how the greatest of all time would be ranked second. Like, what doesn't make any sense? But I think JJ Watt is one of the best defensive players of all time. No joke. He another, another end. A fours. Uh, who wasn't? Who didn't even make the top 100? And since you're a Titans fan because of Mariota, um, I think Jarrell Casey. I mean, he's been he's been robbed year after year. Um, he's been robbed from Pro Bowls just because he plays for a small market team that hasn't had much success. He's a he, he's a he's a great player, uh, great lineman. He's great at stuffing the run. Ah, uh, he's a pretty good pass rusher as well. I, I feel like he just gets robbed every single year just because of the team he's on. I can agree more. It's like in to put it in basketball terms, it's like the Gordon Hayward or Mike Conley, as you mentioned, because. You made an argument earlier that Mike Conley didn't make an all-star game. Well, I watch a lot of basketball, as you know. A lot, yeah, a lot of me. basketball. Lots every day. Lots of games. I even watch summer league kids. Um, but Mike Conley, phenomenal player. He got robbed, like, at least three times. So did Gordon Hayward. I mean, Gordon Hayward plays for Utah. Half people don't even know who Gordon Hayward is. I mean, a lot of times in baseball, this happens. Like, this kid from Arizona, A.J. Lamb. I didn't know who he was till last week. And I learned that he has, like, 19 home runs. He has, like, a 300 batting average and 51 RBIs, which is phenomenal. And he is, like, not even going to make the All-Star team because he plays in Arizona, basically. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, he, another snub is definitely Devin McCourty. Um he, he, he had a great season. That Patriots secondary played a lot better than a lot of people thought of. Malcolm Butler making a Pro Bowl, obviously. But then from McCourty, I, I'm not sure. If, I'm sure. I think he made it one year, like very, very low. He's either, he's either made it one year or not at all. But again, another another Patriot, of course. I mean, but I it's not just because of my Patriots fans, because they're great players. I mean, Devin McCourty is probably one of the best safeties in the league. 
and the the players decide not to put him on. I, I don't know what's up with that. Totally. He's a lockdown safety. Completely agree. I think he's maybe the Patriot effect on the NFL. I have five players that got robbed and five players that got lucky right here. Vontae Davis, top tier corner. Don't even know how he wasn't top eighty, let alone not even on the list. I thought that was kind of ridiculous. Um, Devin McCourty, like like you said, Devin McCourty, all pro safety. Don't understand it. Jamie Collins, another New England Patriot that got robbed. Jamie Collins is an athletic freak. I've never seen anything like him. I don't get it how he didn't make the list. I I don't get it. Jameis Winston. This uh, is controversial, I know. No, no, I, I agree. I agree. Depending Jameis, on what you put him. If you put him yes, high, he's then a I rookie. Don't I didn't I'm not saying put him high. Maybe I don't care if he's number one hundred. Honestly. Uh, yeah, that I agree with you on that. Number one hundred, number nine. But his re- phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal rookie season. I am a huge fan of Winston. Great player. He was great at Florida State. Being a Ducks fan, I know a lot about Winston. And forget the crowd legs. He's just a great player. And my number one player that got robbed, my opinion, top 50 player in the NFL, Anthony Barr. He oh, yeah, definitely. He's absolutely host. He plays for Minnesota. No one really follows yeah, another, Minnesota. Another small market team. Another small market team. I think it was absolutely ridiculous. Ludicrous that he didn't make this. And I'm going to go now five players that got lucky. Um, Jay Stewie. A duck. Jonathan Stewart, yeah. I'm going to roast a lot of ducks right now. I'm sorry, Oregon fans. Um, Jay Stewart, I... Why? Why? How are you telling me this man is a top one? No. I can name about three players that didn't make the list. Like, I would take Justin Forsett over Jay Stewie all day long. I j- I'm sorry. I just would. Um, then we got Cameron Jordan. I don't know how he made this list. I'm I'm not even going to comment. I just, I'm glad he did. I don't understand it. I, I don't. Alan Hearns. How in the world did a guy, I don't even think he broke 1,000 receiving yards last year, get on the top 100 list for a while. I, what? Why? Just why? Doesn't make any sense. He's a number two. He's a great player. He may make it next year, but at this point in time, I would choose him if he was on a team, but not top 100. I'm sorry. I think Carson Palmer got lucky as well. I mean, I'm looking at the list right now, and he has nine spots ahead of Big Ben. I know Big Ben's injured, but really, Carson Palmer, I mean, he's a choke artist, and he always gets hurt. I don't think he should be number 12. I think that's extremely high. I think he should be down in like the fifties or something. I know he played. I know he played great this season. But like, just look at the weapons around him. Look at his playoffs. I mean, I, I definitely don't think he deserved to be number. What was he? Twelve. I definitely don't agree with that. I'm gonna get to higher and lower in a second. I'm just gonna finish out getting lucky. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, Keep going. Gary Barnage. He was a longtime Arizona Cardinal. He didn't play a lot. Yes, he had a pretty good campaign with the Browns, but one season, and well, he was. Mid 80s, I believe. Higher than one of the best defensive young players in the game, Anthony Barr. Just no. No way. No. No way. And then lastly, Blake Bortles. Blake Bortles is a great player. Let me, let me explain here. Blake Bortles is a great player. Blake Bortles has a lot of potential. But his offensive line is not trash as it once was. He has a pretty okay offensive line. Good enough for the NFL. Let's put it like that. Good enough. He had Allen Robinson. Uh, I just slammed him a couple moments ago, but Allen Hearns is a pretty good number two. I just don't think he's top 100 right now. He very mel, like very well could be, you know, but not at the, right now. Julius Thomas exploded when he was on the field. I just don't think. I would take Jameis over Blake Portals right now. I really would. Yeah. I actually think like number fifty six. That's a little high. I wouldn't. I'm not gonna say like, well, it's extremely like a travesty. I thought. But that I, was I just don't think. I think number fifty six, maybe like a few spots lower. I'm like you said, he has a lot of potential. I know he has a lot of good players, but I feel like if this is if, depending on how the players rank this, whether it was last year, this year, um, la- last year, next year, rather, um, the way that, the way how confusing this list, like the rules and stuff are. Yeah. But, 
I actually like Nick Foles rating there. I know he turned the ball over a lot, but he did. I feel like I, I, I actually I I think that's a decent slot, number fifty six. Definitely, other players uh, should have been higher than him that weren't. But I think number fifty six out of all the players in the NFL, that's a pretty that's a pretty fair ranking for Blake Bortles. For ranked higher, I was. If you can't tell, I am done with this list. Uh, this is awful. Ranked higher, Chris Harris Jr. This man. Oh my God, absolutely robbed. They put a key to lead over Chris Harris. Chris Harris is the number one corner on the team, and they put the number two corner on the team ahead of him. I, I yeah, I keep look how it doesn't make it. Is so high too, number thirty four. Are you kidding me? Yeah, Akeem Talib is not the thirty-four best player in the league. I'm sorry. Sorry, Akeem. He's above. He's, a, he's above Andy Dalton. He's 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 above Greg Olson. Oh, he's above Nandama Kinsu. I still can't believe he's, he's above Tyron Smith. Chris Harris Jr. Though I don't get that. Khalil Mack. I, I'm I don't know how Jamar Chase. Oh wait, you can. I'll, I'll let you finish. Uh, Khalil Mack, and then I'll go to my next one. All right, thank you. Um, Khalil Mack. I'm kind of nitpicking here, but <laughs> this guy's a freak. He's an All-Pro at two positions. Two. And what what is he like seventeen? Fifth oh Let's fifth check. I think he is I think he is seventeen. Uh nope, that belongs to Russell Wilson. He's thirteen. He's thirteen, um excuse me. Thirteen. I he's like a top ten player in the league, no doubt about it. Uh, I just think that's a little nitpicky, but when you're like I just feel like there's a big gap between eleven and twenty when it comes to players in the league. And I think he should be with the high class there. All right. I think Continue. Demarcus Ware at number thirty-six is extremely, extremely high. That's just that's so, that's so ridiculous to me. Number thirty-six for Demarcus Ware. I mean, what have you ever heard an announcer saying? What a play by Demarcus Ware in the past two seasons. What have you Not ever much. seen Demarcus Ware take over a game? Again, Not like much. Ezekiel Anza. He's ahead of Ziggy Anza. I, I don't believe that. Oh, he was one. He was one. I think Ziggy Anza criminal. He's ahead. Criminally he's ahead of. He's ahead of Chandler Jones. He's ahead of Fletcher Cox. Just look at all these D linemen he's ahead of. And it's just ridiculous. Like, I, I'm not saying he's a bad player, but I think he's extremely, extremely overrated. I'm not even sure if he should have made the list. He didn't have that good of a season. Ziggy, I completely agree with Ziggy Onza. I'm huge on Ziggy Onza. I think he's phenomenal. Yeah, he's higher than, yeah, he's higher than I, I think Ziggy he's Onza. phenomenal. Ridiculous. And Chandler mm-hmm. Jones. Three more guys that I think got robbed. Derek Carr at 100? They're telling that's, me that's, that's ridiculous. They're telling me that Blake Bortles is fifty, almost fifty spots ahead of uh, Derek Carr. I would take Derek Carr over Blake Bortles every day of the week. I don't, I don't understand. I don't. This guy had a g- great rookie season with trash. I mean, one of one of the best rookie seasons I've ever seen with what he had around him. Honestly, mm-hmm. I, I think Harrison Earl, Smith. With, oh, right, he's Earl Thomas. Up. Earl Thomas. Oh, I got uh, another safety coming up. He's about 66. Around mid-60 range. I believe it was 66. He is exactly 66. That's 66. Good. Um, I, dude, I don't get it. I That doesn't make any sense to me. I think. So. I don't get it. Oh, Harrison Smith. Yeah, Harrison. The third best safety in the league. He's, he's right next to Earl Thomas. He's six below, 73. How are two of the best safeties in the league, 70 and six, 73 and 66? It doesn't That's make ridiculous sense. to me. Harrison Smith, I feel like, is the most un- again small market team, Minnesota. Um, I feel like I, I feel like uh, it just gets me so mad. How Harrison Smith, who just dominated year in and year out, ball hawk, great player, great hitter. He, he's an all around safety who can do everything, and he's only seventy three. Yeah, and for lastly, for ranked higher, there, there's a bunch more, but I just limited it to six for myself, so I didn't bore you guys to death. I'm gonna go Jordan Reed. Tight end for the Redskins. Jordan Reed, I would say top three tight end in the league. No doubt about it. I, I think right now he may be better than Greg Olson as well. It, mm-hmm. If you watch Greg this Olson's, kid. Greg Olson's extremely high too. If you watch this kid, he is so good. He can catch everything you throw at him. He had a pretty good game against the Packers too. That was a great game. Playoffs this past year. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I know your favorite player. I just I, I didn't even think he made the list. I I should have checked this before. I forgot about him. Alex Smith at number eighty one. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I I, oh I, mean, I mean I mean handing off and throwing twenty. Will you let me? Game, I mean, will you let 81. me worst? All right, people. In case you haven't known, 
I am the biggest Alex Smith hater in the world. Alex Smith, I hope you're here listening. I hope you're listening to this podcast right now. Alex Smith, all right? You don't do anything. You throw the ball about 18 times a game. You have about 200 yards a game, if you're lucky. You don't throw more than, like, 10 yards. You throw, like, two feet. You do, like, bubble screens. You're, like, college quarterback. It's absolutely ludicrous. You had one good – your only good game was against New England in the playoffs, and they were making, like, one-hand, like, Odell catches the entire game. You got yeah, saved, like, buddy. You had, you had Jeremy Macklin, who didn't actually didn't do much. I forget his name. He was there. He was there young – Jason Avant. Jason, Jason Avant went, off, oh. he went oh. off in that game. Like, <laughs> One-hand catches, like, over... Oh, it was ridiculous. Jason Avant wants to win a playoff game. A second playoff game. Yeah, he, he almost single-handedly won that game. Like, uh, congrats to I Jason Avant. Game. Yeah, you were. That game. That game Congra- congrats, buddy. Um, rank lower. Patrick Peterson. What? How is Richard Sher- I'm a huge Patrick Peterson guy. He's one of my favorite players in the league. But Richard Sherman, Chris Harris are lower than... Patrick Peterson. I just don't understand. Josh Norman. Next, I'm not 11. even. I'm he's not, not, he's even, not eleven. I mean, I'm not even a roast. Like, really? I, I'm. I have so much to say about that. I'm just gonna move on. AJ Green. I, I, I want to see how he does on the Redskins. Another one of my favorite players. Oh my god, the guy is so overrated though. Oh, it's ridiculous. Todd Gurley. Adrian, now this one. Jeremiah this Green. one I will go off on. Todd Gurley. Okay. Reggie Bush had a really good rookie season. Reggie Bush was really good in college. Reggie, Bu- Reggie Bush has not been heard of again. All right. Reggie Bush. Reggie, Reggie Bush's career is now hiding in a bush, looking for us to try to find it. In San Francisco, exactly. Todd Gurley's injury prone. He missed a few games earlier this year. He was injury prone in college. There is no way. I. I. He has a lot of potential. He's. He's good. There's no way you could put him over Doug Martin, over best safeties in the league. You just can't do it. Way, way, over way, Darryl way, 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 too hard. Over way too Justin hard. Houston, over Fitzy, over Tyron Matthew. This one's going to come with a lot of controversy. Le'Veon Bell. He, I'm going to say it, I'll say it once and I'll say it again. If you play, you play eight games a year. If you play eight games a year. 41. At a high, at a high level. I'm sorry, but. Kind of useless. Eight games a year. That's it's like Jamal Charles. I mean, but yeah, he's suffering from the same thing. I, I like They're, Jamal Charles' ranking. I actually, I don't think maybe he shouldn't be on the list, but I actually like his ranking. I think Levy and Bill should be there, down there with him. But yeah, rather so than I like, I like Charles' one. ranking. I like their ranking. Um, I don't like. Uh, I don't, I don't like the Levy and Bill. Yeah, exactly. I, I get he's so, a great running back, but injury is. I always say it's the fourth part of the game. It's mm-hmm. like special teams, offense, and defense. Injuries is the fourth. Fourth quarter there. And then I already said Cam Newton. So you want to wrap this up now? Uh, I think this is a pretty successful podcast. Uh, Give your comments. uh, Tell us us, uh, what you enjoyed about it, what you didn't. Give some suggestions for next time we do this. And I hope you enjoyed. Look at us.